Hi folks, it's good to see you. Hope everybody's okay today. We're having uh, some studies in the um, the Gospel of John today, so I hope you're okay today. Let's come before the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, I praise you and thank you for this day. And Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would anoint these messages. And Father, I pray that you would use them to save souls. I pray that you bless and use this preaching and teaching for your glory. And Father, I pray that you would bring souls into salvation. I ask this, Father, in your name and for your glory. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's look at uh, the main passage that we're looking at. I don't know, this be about four or five uh, reflections. So, so we're looking at John chapter 3, and we're looking at Nicodemus. He says, Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you were doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. And Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. Uh, you, you hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the spirit. How can this be, Nicodemus, Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and you do not understand these things. I tell you the truth. We speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen. But still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do, do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one, ev no one has ever gone into heaven except those who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not, come, did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of God's only begotten Son. This is the verdict, light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light, because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light, and will not come into the light, for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light, so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. So, we're looking at Nicodemus. And some people will say, Jay, I can put off being a Christian because I'm young and I can go around the world and just enjoy my life. And that's all uh, I need to do at the moment. But the thing is, you might not get a chance. You might die tonight. And if you do, you'll go to hell. And you need to get right with God now while you can. In Matthew chapter 13, uh, Matthew chapter and he said, Jay, but if I come and know Jesus, I've got to stop things in my life and I don't want to spoil my fun. Well, Matthew 13, 45 says, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of the great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. I mean, this is the most important thing in your life. Salvation is the most important thing in your life. And you can't put it off. It's important that you sort this issue now, today. So the first thing is, Nicodemus was religious, okay? Many young people are put off by Christianity because they're put off by religion. They think, well, religion 
because his war's religion uh, is all judgmental. But did you notice something in that passage? Nicodemus was religious, yet we're seeing that the New Testament is saying that religion is not what it's about. Religion can't solve any issues. And just incidentally, uh, atheism has caused just as many wars and killed just as many people under, for example, example communist Russia and China than, relig than religion ever has. But back to religion. Religion fails. Nicodemus was a Pharisee. He was well educated in the scriptures. He was religious, a holy man. But still it failed. It wasn't enough to save him. Okay. People can say I've read the Bible. They can say I go to church. They can say that they're holy in this and whatever. But at the end of the day, religion is no good. It doesn't save. Matthew uh, 15 7 let's go to Matthew 15 7 it says you hypocrites Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you uh, these people honor me with their lips but their hearts are far from me they worship me in vain their teachings are, are but rules taught by men you see you can be religious but still a hypocrite you can wear a, a suit and go to church but still be a hypocrite or you can be a person who Maybe it doesn't go to church, but you think you're moral and you're upright. That's still another form of hypocrisy. You see, no matter what we do, our good deeds, whether it be religious or not, cannot be satisfying God because we all fall short of the glory of God. If we turn to Philippians chapter 3, verse 4 and 7. Philippians chapter 3, verse 4 and 7. We read these words. Um, it says um, though I myself have reason for such confidence if anyone else thinks he has reasons to put confidence in the flesh I have more circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin a Hebrew of Hebrews in regard to the law of Pharisee as for zeal persecuting the church as for legalistic righteousness faultless but whatever was to my profit I now consider loss for the sake of Christ what is more I can say I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of the knowledge of Christ Jesus our Lord for whose sake I have lost all things I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ you see we've got to realize that every one of us is a sinner Paul realized he was a Pharisee of Pharisees he was a man who was holy, he was righteous, but yet he said, I call it rubbish that I may gain Christ. And we've got to come to this point in our lives that we realize that our good deeds are filthy rags before God. And only Christ can cleanse us, only Christ can wash us, only Christ can be the center of our life. And it's only until we get to that point where we come to an end in ourselves and depend on the living God will we ever know what it is to find real joy and peace in life religion is nothing for God God regards not religion he regards salvation in Christ okay thank you for listening and take care